they can know, hey, we need to be up in this county. Now, I don't know about the rest of them. Uh, hey, man, I know that uh, uh, that the that the cruise campaign has hired a, a certain analytics company. Of, hey man, and they knew going into Iowa. Hey man, they, they, they were continually doing data analysis on every county. They knew before the vote even started how many votes they would need in each county in order to win. They knew where they were. They, they tried to figure out where they would get the least amount of votes. And then they focused on those counties because they knew they had to get those numbers up in order to win. There's a lot of factors that go into that. Amen. But everybody's trying to know what's going to happen tomorrow. What is going to happen the next day? What's going to take place the next week? And we got it planned out for months on end. Amen. I know in June and July, if ever if there's absolutely nothing terrible that happens, I'm going to be Hey man, down in southern Illinois, every year, that's where it is. I plan, I know what's going to happen. I like to know. My, her, my family and Sister Brianne's family are, are polar opposites when it comes to this. They like to plan. My family doesn't plan. They know what they're going to do on their vacation, almost. It doesn't work out, you know, generally, but... Generally, they figure, well, uh, you know, two months from now, while we're down in such and such place, we're going to leave, you know, one or two o'clock, and we're going to go over here. They call me, and they say, uh, all right, when you guys coming over? I don't know. (laughs) He called down. uh, They got their Christmas all planned out months ahead of time. I call my family and say, when are we having Christmas? Oh, we don't know. We ain't talked about it yet. A week before Christmas, well, we think we're going to have, you know, get together maybe on this day. Ah, It's still up in the air. (laughs) We kind of go by the seat of our pants. And so, as a shocking world for her stepping into my world, she says, uh, where, uh, when are we going to do this? I don't know, baby. Oh, why don't we plan on going there? I said, because something might happen. We don't know what's going to happen. Uh, you know, uh, well, why can't we go here? Well, you know, we just something might, we're not going to tell anybody we're going to be there for sure. Because if we don't show up, we'll be liars. <laughs> Two different worlds. Two different worlds. We just kind of go by the seat of our pants more. What are we going to do next week? Well, we don't know. What are you going to do next month? I don't know. We try to make plans, but you get tired of making plans when they're constantly interrupted, don't you? <laughs> Just do it when it works out. And so, our, our, we're polar, polar opposites. But these folks, they're always trying to figure out what's going to happen tomorrow. They want an assurance of tomorrow. We need to get their focus off tomorrow and upon eternity. We need to get our focus off tomorrow and upon eternity. Bible, let's, if anything, we can take it from the Bible. When the Bible says that life is but a vapor, that we have no guarantee of tomorrow, that tomorrow may not come, that today may be all we have. Hey man, when it comes to serving the Lord, uh, hey man, uh, we, 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 we have no promise, uh, hey man, of what is going to happen tomorrow. Uh, hey man, you look at this election and these polls, uh, hey man, but this, just for one instance, uh, it happens every year, but just this year, just in Iowa, hey man, they broadcasted one candidate to win by a wide margin uh, and he lost by several points. Uh, hey man, the polls proved to be wrong. Amen. And that's what we, we can uh, uh, we can try as far as the church and our individual lives. We can try to plan where we're going to be. Amen. But when it comes to the troubles and trials of this life, amen, we've got to let go. We can't plan our trials. We can't plan our way through troubles. Amen. We've got to turn it over to God. Amen. Because, amen, he can change the results from what in everybody. Nobody expects the one that nobody expected. 
Amen. He can, everybody can look at you and say it's hopeless. And God can give us hope. Everybody can say there's no point. But God can give us that purpose. Amen. Hallelujah. God makes a way when there seems to be no way. All we've got to do is trust Him and obey. <laughs> God's got a way of coming through when nobody nowhere knows just what to do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All you got to do is take a step of faith. Amen. Trust Him and obey. God's an on-time God. The only way he doesn't seem like an on-time God is when we put God on our own time. When we try to put God on our standard and we say, God, it's got to work out by this or it's got to work out this way. And when it doesn't happen, we get upset because we had the wrong expectation. Come get me a song, sweetheart. Amen. We had the wrong expectation. Amen. It's not that God didn't move. It's that God didn't move the way we wanted that we're upset about. Amen. He didn't move on a timeline we thought he ought to. That's what we get upset about. We had the wrong expectation. But if we'll put it in the hands of God and expect him to do however he thinks is best, we will not be disappointed. A lot of folks get upset and leave the house of God and leave church and leave everything behind because it wasn't going the way they thought it ought to go. Maybe things weren't happening the way they think they ought to happen. Amen. Maybe it wasn't growing the way they thought it. Amen. Maybe the pastor didn't use them in the ministry they wanted to be used in. Amen. But let's put it in the hands of God and and we'll stop being disappointed by our own expectations. Amen. Open your mind and thy heart to the Lord. Amen. Allow Him to move. Hallelujah. In the way. That ought to be the way our prayer is focused this morning. Lord, not my will, but thine be done. Lord, not necessarily right now, but God, would you just move? Would you reveal yourself? Would you deal with my heart? God, pull me off of my schedule. Pull me out of my groove. God, get me out of my rut. Put me back on the path that you'd like me to be on this morning. He's an on-time God. Hey Amen. But if you it's just like them kids on my bus ride, if they're not at the bus stop at the right time, they miss it. If I'm at that stop at the time I'm supposed to be at and nobody's there and I can't see nobody coming, I can take off. God, I'm not saying he's going to leave us behind. Don't get me wrong. But if we'll put it in the hands of God and we'll do what we're supposed to do and be where God wants us to be, amen, we won't miss the blessing of God. <laughs> we won't miss the blessing. If we'll be where God wants us to be. And that place is a place called complete surrender. Complete devotion. Complete consecration. Amen. No, and it's it's even greater than when we stood at the altar and we talked to that young lady or that young man that we were going to give our life to and we said, uh, hey, for better or for worse, for richer and poorer, as long as we both shall live. But it's even a greater commitment than that. Amen. It's even greater than that. We need to put our hands, our our hearts in the hand of God and allow Him to lead us and guide us this morning. Let's find a place to pray.